Good morning, everybody, and um, welcome to our painting live this morning. And actually, this is our last live of 2020. We're going to be taking a little break over Christmas. So I um, want to wish all of you a very happy Christmas, very happy new year. We will keep posting over the holidays, but uh, just take a little break from the lives. But we will be back in the new year with lots of exciting um, topics and things to cover. So um, yeah, hope you enjoy today's live. So today, um, Kate has come back from the paint hub. It's brilliant. She's such a wealth of knowledge. Uh, she's so much experience. So she's the perfect person to have if you have any questions to do with painting. If any of you are planning on tackling a painting project over the holidays, uh, make sure to get your question in and avail of Kate's expertise this morning. So I see Kate is there. I'm just going to ask her to join. Good morning. Hi, Kate. Good morning, Denise. I'm going lower this down. I'm only getting some of my head in. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good. Not too bad. I'll just lower this down so you can see me a bit more. Now, can you see me there? Brilliant. Yes, fantastic. I might move mine as well because, yeah, no, that's a bit better. There we go. Fabulous. How are you? Good. Not too bad. How are you? Very good. Very good. I was saying this is our last live of 2020. So uh, we're going to be taking a break over the Christmas. <laughs> I can't believe it's, uh, yeah, the end of the year. It's crazy. It's amazing. And this day week, Stevens's day, it's, I just think oh, for everybody, it's been the quickest lead up to Christmas. Probably yeah. we didn't make it at the shops. No, exactly. Like I haven't been anywhere. No, it has been frantic, absolutely frantic. But look, thank you so much for giving up uh, this Saturday morning to talk to us. We've had some great questions, Kate, That's and I think welcome. there's loads of people planning uh, a little painting DIY project over the holidays, the ideal time. Oh, great, <laughs> great. Um, but I suppose one of the things actually, Kate, that uh, a lot of people, when they're thinking about painting outdoors, what do you need to be mindful of? you know, with the cold weather and stuff like that, because it's not always ideal to, to paint outdoors yeah. during the winter. Yeah, it isn't. Really, you've surpassed the season for painting metal or glass outdoors. Like it's a okay. no-no for metal. Metal has to be brought into a heated environment this time of year. When it's outside, it's like condensation in, in, on your windows in the morning. It's it's mm. the the temperature differential between the steel and the air and moisture just forms on it. So even if you can't see it, there's a microscopic layer of moisture on steel at this time of year. So don't paint steel. Masonry is a lot more forgiving, uh, mainly because the products are mainly made up of water. So it's a lot more forgiving. So um, okay. really once it's not raining, masonry, you can fire ahead. Sorry, now my eyes are crying here. Huh? Oh, don't worry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Coming in from the cold. Um, yeah, but this time of year, really, it's just stay away from most projects. Like if it's your front door, that as well, you don't want to risk there being a layer of moisture on there. So um, masonry is probably the only one I'd go ahead with at this time of year. Yeah. Okay, and even at that, okay. I'd try wait in the spring if you can. Yeah. 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 So the indoor projects really are the ones to be focusing on this time of year. Yeah, absolutely. Change up a room. When you get bored of talking to your family on Stevens's day, head off for an hour and paint a little box room and transform it. <laughs> That's it, exactly. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, one of the, the most common questions we were getting asked actually is people seem to be really focusing on their bathrooms at the moment. And like we've seen so many people tackle bathroom revamps. But yes, one question, yeah. like a bunch of questions actually, um, first about uh, painting bathroom tiles. And I know this came up when we spoke before, mm -hmm. but maybe can you recap then if people are thinking about painting tiles? Yeah, tiles is a great one. Like you can just completely transform them and people don't, purchasing tiles is such a big decision because you're, you're going to replace them when? 20 years, 25. If you look at your parents' house and your own house, when do you replace tiles? We just don't. Yeah. So if you have tiles there and they're plumb and with a white trim and that and you don't like them, it's a super, it's one of the easiest jobs to do, one of the biggest transformations. So really it's all down to the preparation. If they're immaculately clean and you've given your grout the 24 hours to dry out, there's literally no margin for error. The only margin okay. is any aesthetic imperfections. And, and that's easy. Sand back and you touch it up. So uh, get a good a good primer, a good top coat. And it's a really, it's one of the easiest jobs. It's very similar to just painting a wall in a bedroom, really. The products okay. do the work. Yeah, brilliant. And there's yeah. specific products. Like you don't just go out and buy any old paint. Is there a specific tile paint or can you use any paint, Kate? 
Uh, if it says on the can that it's for tiles, then I would trust that. There's obviously yeah. with different brands, you'll see on the market, there goes from economy brands all the way up to premium. It doesn't always need to be the premium ones. The ones in the middle are often the sweet spot where you're not paying top top rate and you're not getting a, you know an underperformer. So there's a sweet spot there in the middle. But once it says it goes on to tiles, I would you, you take its word for it that it's passed test. And it'll often tell you on the can, like there's, there's a grade then. What you're looking for is number one, the bond. But if it goes on to tiles, that's a given. But number two, that is the performance where the, with paint, it goes from not wipeable to wipeable, washable and scrubbable. So for tiles, you need the scrubbable because tiles are in those high wear areas, splashbacks yeah. in your kitchen, utilities, bathrooms. So definitely, yeah, go for a good. The Irish independent paint shops, I never go by them because you're not going to deal with somebody who's only in there on a Saturday. It's usually the father or the daughter or the son. So mm -hmm. go to your Irish independence and get stocked up in case you get a frigary on Stevens Day and you're mad to go and take on a project. No, brilliant. And and you're so right. Those independent um, stores, they are so knowledgeable. I mean, it's incredible yeah. what they know. There's, there's, yeah, there's they a wealth really of knowledge are. in there. So, yeah, just just chat to them. That's great. And then um, yeah. somebody asking uh, tips or advice for removing mold and keeping it away, especially around windows. If yeah, keep it. Yeah, keeping it away is the dodgy one. Often you've got issues with your airflow. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have excessive condensation that in a room, you're you're usually talking about the airflow. So, I suppose creating um creating a, a, a fresh airflow is your number one. So, if you have an extractor fan or opening the window, like if your bathroom doesn't have an extractor fan, you need to be opening the window after you use it. Mm -hmm. But there are paints that won't let mold grow on the surface. So, like Luya, a Chicorilla one. There are other brands as well, and they're specific specifically designed for kitchen bathroom and if they say kitchen mm -hmm. bathroom that means usually you've got anti-molding agents and it just oh, means brilliant. that the, okay. yeah it means the paint is expecting more moisture to sit on it for longer and it won't let that moisture bed into the film of the paint mm -hmm. so if you've cheap hallway paint and it's very chalky if you do a layer of moisture on that it'll it'll soften it and it'll it'll create mold and um, but your kitchen bathroom ones usually they're a little bit more of a satin feel to them and mm -hmm. they're much more robust and they won't let mold grow so number one i'd upgrade your paint system but i'd investigate it then too yeah exactly yeah if there's mold yeah. involved no, that, that's fantastic brilliant and then um, a really good question, actually. So somebody, there's sort of two parts to this question because we've got tons of colour ones, Kate, as well, which I'll tackle now in a minute. But um, somebody who's installing new radiators, they're going for traditional style. And she's asking about matching the colour, which I'll come back to, should they go dark or light? But it's a really good yes. point because radiators are things that people love to paint. So what's your advice? Because I've heard different things. You shouldn't paint them you know but oh paint them yeah go for it that's what i like, say yeah, <laughs> because they can really look yeah. awful yeah like paint is so it's so cheap and it's so easy and it's so reversible again back to tiles tiles it's expensive you get a professional and it's it's a lifetime job and I always nervous when people go for the really funky tiles because they're like god they'll be amazing for eight or ten years but tiles you want 20 years you paint did. is the opposite you could touch yeah. up that radiator with a different yeah. color next week or you can put on stripper and remove it. So obviously I'm very biased. I'm really pro painting, but radiators are the new revolution. Like I love, I love that thing of having the radiator the same color as the wall because they're usually so ugly. Most of us have ugly yeah. radiators yeah, yeah, and yeah. you want it the same color. Even if they're pretty, it breaks up the room. You have a lovely, if you go to dark scheme, especially you have a lovely dark scheme, then this big white eye catching object in the middle of it. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm mad for painting the radiators. And again, it's, it's so, Quick, easy and reversal being the main thing. You can change the colour or take it all off. Yeah, fabulous. And actually, we had Joanne Mooney, who I know uses a lot of your paint for her fabulous yes. home, was on recently. But she had a, a radiator and she sprayed it um, like almost cobalt blue. Like it looked fabulous in her bathroom. So what are the what kind of paints? Do you need a special paint for radiators or is it just a metallic paint or what do you go for? Yeah, you want to make sure you get the grip right. There are a lot of paints that are designed to grip on as a one coat system. So Joanne used the spray paint, WRX. Mm. And again, that's direct to metal. It's mm. it's built to grip on immaculately. Again, mm. make sure you're painting it indoors or in a warm environment, especially if you're going in and out. That that temperature differential, when you bring it out, it gets cold. So that part, if your radiator is in, in a heated environment, you've no issue with the bond. If the product has said it's going to stick to it, it will. So go with something that says, so WRX is your, your quick, easy spray it on and then other than that then I usually go either the Otex primer which is 
a super adhesion primer. It's designed to grip to everything. I put a layer of that on and then my paint. And that okay. paint could be any paint. Whatever you've used on the wall, sometimes people will use on the radiator oh, wow. or whatever okay. you've used on the woodwork. Yeah, you can. It just depends. Like some emulsions wouldn't be very hard wearing and the radiator will get some knocks because it's sitting proud of the wall. Mm -hmm. So usually you're better off going with a woodwork paint as opposed to an emulsion. But mm -hmm. if you've done the room in the one emulsion and you want to bring it onto the rad, there's no problem. Go for it. Okay, well, that's brilliant. I didn't realise that. It, that's yeah. great. And the then this theme is of the day with me is go for it. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. You're dead right. You're dead right. No, and you know what? I was so impressed with the finish Joanne got just by spraying. Like it looked, it looked like it yeah. was made that yeah. way. So it gives an amazing finish. Actually, really looked. Yeah. Well, she made it look absolutely effortless. So uh, maybe that's just Joanne. She's a good, and she's used to using the spray paints. That's and if you're yeah, not used yeah. to. She's used to, she's always, she's painting as much as a painter, but if you're not used to it, have a go out the back with something smaller, even on a piece of cardboard, practice with a nozzle. Like yeah. If you go, if this is the item you're going to paint and you start off straight face on, the paint can fizzle up and build up really quickly. You yeah. need to start spraying out in the air where there's nothing behind it. Get going, get the nozzle pressed when you're not touching or facing the substrate and then start coming across and don't let your finger go again till you're off it. So all uh, the nozzle work is when you're not in front of the item. Yeah. Ah, that's very interesting. Okay, brilliant. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Well, now that's and you can create a you can create a little spray booth very easily with the boxes. If you get a paint delivery or any delivery and you have a box, like if you're painting mirrors and little small items, put them into that box and that's a spray booth made up for you. Brilliant. And listen, everybody's house is full of boxes. I mean, I'm sure everybody's getting stuff delivered at the moment. So no, that's brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant idea. Yeah. Great. And I just say, just back to the lady asking about, should she go dark or match the woodwork? I guess it depends whether you want the radiator to be a feature or you want it to blend in. So, you know, exactly. I'd say, yeah, either either would work. I think, you know, I've seen particularly the old style radiators, they, they take dark colours really, really well. So that could be gorgeous, yeah. make them really stand out. No, and I'd match the wall probably quicker than the woodwork, wouldn't you? Like if you match the woodwork, you're going to have a feature of the rad. But if it's a beautiful rad like Joanne Mooney's one, go for it, make a feature. But usually with radiators, I'm going, usually, usually we're going the same colour as the wall. So yeah, that's dark, exactly. then dark. Yeah, yeah mm. go for it. Absolutely. OK, brilliant. And then, um, oh, yes, another really good question, actually, uh, about dark colours. And I've come up against this before, Kate, where it, it's hard to get the dark colors that are scrubbable. So they're asking what yes. type of paint to go for if you want to go for dark colors, but you want them to be really, really durable and not show up any marks. Yeah, it's a great question because there are two different ways of going about it. We have paint here in dark and it's super durable and washable, but will show up all your handprints because it's the dark color. Oh, okay. But I, yeah. you just, you get it, you literally get, so let's say our Optiva, three ceramic it's a dead mm -hmm. flat like a farrow ball a chalky mat now mm -hmm. it's wipeable washable scrubbable everything so no matter yeah. what goes on it you just get a dry cloth and you wipe it off but i found i did it in my downstairs loo in black and the kids paws were on it the whole time so i was a little bit mm -hmm. devastated about that so if you're going dark you have to go up a little bit on the sheen level so instead of optiva three in the hallway i went dark blue i went optiva five so it's a little bit more of a satin element with just a little bit because the classification of matte is zero to 10. It's a zero to 100 scale for uh, matte to gloss. So mm -hmm. three is a super dead, flat, non-reflective matte. So Optiva okay. three is that one. So I just went to a five, which is literally halfway in the matte scale. It's still classified as a matte, but there's a very slight sheen. There's less of a powdery feel. So the mm -hmm. kids' handprints don't stick to it. So it just means the more you go up, the less you'll have the handprints. But also bear in mind, the more you go up and it's a dark color, you'll see all those surface imperfections. Of so course. it's a catch-22. I wouldn't go above a five. Okay. Just to make it really tip. complicated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, but that's a great tip because that's the last thing you want, yeah, is for it to be showing up everything, particularly in the evening when the lights are on, you know, if you've light shining yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the Optiva 3, the dead, dead flat one, it won't show off any surface imperfections. Even when you have a lamp glaring onto that surface, it's not reflective. You don't see the glare of the lamp off it. So okay. if your walls are not in good nick or you're going dark, I'd go Optiva 3. But if you have kids, I'd bring it to the 5. I wouldn't go to 7 or anything. Go to the 5 and that will give you the mix of the two. It will give you where the, if the kids touch it, you don't see it, which is important for the dark one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, brilliant. And but actually, I'd... the kids to a relative for a few years. Farm out the kids, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, the other yeah. alternative. Um, the people saying they, they love the paint hub, which of course is just, yeah, amazing. Oh, um, I spotted much. a question there just about, yes, can you make a matte paint into a soft sheen? 
Um, no, you couldn't. No, not at home yourself. Um, no, you couldn't. It would be different ingredients in it. The core ingredients would be different. We have a matting agent here for commercial customers and in a gloss paint, they can add a little bit by little bit and dampen down the gloss. But mm-hmm. it would be difficult to go the other way. You'd have to be adding like varnish type ingredients and you'd be mm-hmm. diluting the colour and everything. Yeah, so no, yeah. you, you no. can't. No, no. No, and it would mess you can with the composition. Oh, you can mattify yeah. a sheen. Ah, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah, mattifying agent comes in one liters. It's like yeah. kind of like a wallpaper paste meets talcum powder type thing and you put it in, it doesn't mess with the color and it dampens the gloss. So if you had an expensive kind of gloss paint, you can buy that. But for the time and effort, you're nearly as well getting the different paint. But yeah, mm. at home, it is possible to bring a sheen down, but not to bring it up. That's really interesting. Okay, wow, fabulous. Um, somebody just saying there, Kate, that they have a problem at their stove. We use coal, so white skirting board near it gets so dirty. Any ideas what they can do? I tell you what I would do there is I'd put a clear lacquer over it, like a varnishy layer. So when people think varnish, they think more like in a pub, like a high gloss orangey varnish. Mm. Varnishes these days are crystal clear and you can choose your matte level. You can choose super dead flat matte, matte satin and gloss so I just would choose the sheen level of what's already on the skirting board so Mm -hmm. if it's a satin which they're usually satin I'd give it a fresh lick of white satin and then I'd get a satin um, varnish top coat so polyvine we're actually discontinuing that range so ours are half price moment but polyvine is a lovely range we're only we don't have the agency for the country is the only reason this there's no other reason it's an amazing brand it's in Mm. a lot of your followers are Dublin it's in Stalorgan Decor Fuller Paints and that's a, a really good, like, scrubbable, eco, water-based varnish. That's what I do. That's the only thing you really can do. And that'll protect it. It'll just give another layer of a film between the coal and your lovely white finish. Yeah, or okay. your other option is a really good scrubbable white. Yes, of course. Yeah, that's easy to clean. Or paint it dark, if that works with the colour scheme yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I forgot about that one. Yeah, you paint it dark. And actually, yeah. Kate, it just reminds me when I was doing a QA and a a while back that somebody was asking about any um, any sort of lacquer or I suppose varnish or some sort of something that you could put on a timber floor if you sanded it back to stop it going yellow. Are there any sort of protection? Yeah. Yeah. So when you go the oil based varnishes, they all yellow. So we were talking about that the last day. Yes, like if yes. you use oil based paint for your doors, skirting, which is still so common, mm. actually, no matter what the brand, it will yellow within one to two years. Mm-hmm. So um, same goes for your varnishes for your floor. Don't use oil based, use a water based. Um, my parents did theirs recently used. Obviously, we do a lot in Ticarillas. So they used a Ticarilla one in Unica. But there are loads of good, again, Polyvine, they have a heavy duty floor varnish. There are loads of companies with good water based varnishes for your floors. And if it's water based, it's non yellowing. That's fascinating. I never thought about it in terms of varnishes as well, because so many floors, they are oiled. I mean, that, that's, that's yeah. it's, it's some sort yeah. of oil based finish that would go on it. And it's such a problem, particularly where they're near, you know, sliding doors and things like that. That's fascinating. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Great. and they're not. If they want to take the yellowness away, like my parents had it, and it was an oak floor, so they got the um, Unica in a stain, and they put some stain into it, so it comes in clear stain and a full-bodied color. So it depends mm-hmm. if you want to totally obliterate the look of the floorboards, you need have a full-bodied color, clear to keep the exact same look, or tinted. So they put in a grey stain to take the oranginess out of the floor and put a grey stain over it, so you could still see the knots and you could yeah. still see a lot of the wood but it was um, stained. So that's a nice option if you want to change the scheme because so often you see people getting the lovely grey colours and like pine and oak, There, it's like you'd say, you're, you're stuck in that orange-brown yeah. colour scheme then. Your only options yeah. are yellowy, orangey or green colours. You can't go into the greys and blues comfortably. No, exactly. It just, they jar mm-hmm. completely. No, no, that, that's yeah. fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah. And then somebody asking, Kate, should you put varnish on kitchen cabinets after painting them? And if so, what kind? So I suppose it's to make Denise, it more I'll durable. Have no, I'll, I'll have no mascara left on this one eye, more importantly, by the time this <laughs> You're is like over. You're like me, I'm this eye here is I constantly don't know what I, got in this I don't know eye. why mine isn't. <laughs> I know what I got in this eye. I've got some kind of allergy <laughs> brew. Sorry, a kitchen canvas. Yeah, so... It depends on what brand, again, you used. Um, like a lot of the brands are good. There'll be one or two wouldn't be great. So it depends on what you use. See how you... The danger of living in it first is that if it gets scuffed, touch-ups are never as good as a real thing. So if yeah, in okay. doubt, absolutely put on a clear lacquer. Um, we have one Kiva and it's another clear layer between it. Again, 
Polyvine have one. I'm not sure who else I'd say. Ron Seals and that. Again, don't go oil-based. Definitely go water-based. Okay. And yeah, there's no harm. There's no harm doing it. So mm-hmm. really, if you're worried, I would. Kitchen cabinets get a ferocious level of wear. So yeah. if you're low wear on your kitchen as it is, if you don't wash your kitchen presses often and they still look clean, then you're not really a clear sealer candidate. But if you mm-hmm. are washing them and you have kids and that... I would, yeah, it's handy. But again, depends on the paint because the grade level, like again, you've some that are barely wipeable and you've some that are really strong. Okay, okay, now brilliant, brilliant. And then, oh, really good question here, actually. Any recommendations for painting a laminate floor? Yeah, laminate floors are tricky because you have that balance of the coating being tough enough to withstand loads of wear and then having a little bit of give. So it's not really the ideal one for painting. Um, yeah, so we, we we tend to stay away from it. There's no long-term solutions. Again, go into your Irish independence and they'll have something, but it will be something you'll probably touch up yearly or every second year. Again, you want an adhesion primer. We we sometimes go with the system Otex. It grips on, so Otex, and then our single pack floor paint, Better Lux. It's what we use for all the line marking here in the shop and it's a, it's a good one. But even over laminate, like it works unbelievably on wo- hard wooden floors and that. But laminate, it's that mixture of that slippery surface and mm. that little bit of give. So technically laminate, there's not really any unbelievable system out there. You will be touching it up every every year or two, really. In yeah, honesty. yeah. And I suppose it is weighing it up sometimes. Like it's good for a quick fix, but, you know, if you're looking to replace yeah. it or, you know, revamp the house, Sometimes these things are better to replace than, than spend a lot of money and time and stuff trying to achieve yeah. something that is going to wear yeah. um, over time. Yeah. Just as you're talking there, Kate, I'm thinking about sealants, you know, people putting sealants on tiles and things. Are they things you guys supply and uh, just to seal, say, if it's natural stone, mm-hmm. that sort of thing? And is there anything to be mindful of there if people are looking to do that? Just to Yeah, them? yeah. For natural stone, for sinks, is it? Well, more like for tiles or, you know, on floors, things like that. Tiles on floors. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there are. Again, I'd probably go, yeah, the the polyvine. I keep mentioning them today because they're specifically clear lacquers. Like that's their whole business. So they have them from everything from wallpaper to you know stone so yeah there are brick and stone protectors and um, i'd go with something like that a brick and stone protector we have them here as well in berlin water seal it's called um, yeah. and it's a clear light lacquer uh, again cr- the idea behind them is they're crystal clear so again go with water based crystal clear lacquer and they just sit on top and um, they're they're a very fine film and they just prevent again any build up mosses molds water and um, so yeah there are there are a good range of those out there um you Brilliant. often don't need to do it on on, on floors and um, the tiles should be designed that way but if you find you're getting an issue um, mm-hmm. there are options and anti-slip as well we've um, new nanotechnology stuff anti-slip little bottles and they're invisible and you can spray them on the floor and when the floor gets wet you've got really strong traction really? Um, yeah another water based option again nanotechnology and that so nanotechnology and paint just means you can have an ultra ultra fine film so you don't affect the look of the tile you can't see it you can barely feel it so I suppose the acid test is if you wet your tile and you put your hand along and it's slippy, you'll know if you've been issued with slippy tiles. But before you do it, do that. And then you spray this on um, an anti-slip nanotech and you uh, wipe it in with microfiber cloth, wait a, about two minutes, wash it off, then pour water on and put your hand and you won't have that sliding motion. So there's really good stuff now for tiles. If you have issues with your tiles, whether it's anti-molding or like that little one, anti-slip, it's a really quick fix for like a little... 20 or 30 euro bottle so it's, that's, that's a nice a one brilliant really idea one. i had no idea mm. that would you know and you'd be nervous about spraying something on tiles especially if yeah. they're glossy or something that it would yeah that's yeah. fascinating case can yeah. you share some of these things in stories or something later um just so yeah. people know yeah the names of them because i think that that that's a fascinating product yeah i'll brilliant. share that one in our stories before i go i'll hold up the yeah. bottle i have it there in the shop somewhere shop's a bit big I'll find a bottle I'll find the bottles and I'll just hold it up but mm-hmm. it's, that one's a dinky one the nanotechnology stuff is so exciting because the the range we have in it's from America like they're non-toxic they're water-based and they're just super high function and such a fine film and so they bring really high function and um, properties so if it's if you're looking for again anti-molding biocidal anti-slip or self-cleaning you know all the funky videos you see on Facebook where yeah, they throw yeah. a muck on a t-shirt and it repels or they throw a yeah. book and a muck on a car and it repels off like as if it's been shoved off that's mm-hmm. all the nanotechnology stuff that we're we're doing now 
That's amazing. Wow. Fabulous. Very great. Exciting, yeah. No, it's great. And then somebody asking, what can you put on slate floors other than a finish that washes away over time? I would love something permanent um, that will keep the colors and easily maintain, keep it easy to maintain. Again, that stone and brick protectors. Yeah, you yeah. need something like that. You have to prime the slate because slate, again, is quite tricky. But then it's just down to the level of foot traffic. So you just have to match the product with your level. So again, same as the kitchens. Yes. Again, if you've yeah. got kids, if you've got dogs, floors are difficult. Like if you've got dogs, nails, you see when you sand back a wall to prepare it, you're essentially doing that every day. So like mm -hmm. it, it depends on your level of wear. You have to match your, your household to the paint you go for. So essentially, if you're a very high wear household, you have to go for two pack epoxies. Normal floor paint on the shelf is just designed for normal foot traffic. We usually say once there's a wheel in the mix, go two pack. So if you have trolleys or scooters or kids toys, uh, if it's in your garage and you have a ride on lawnmower or a car, two pack is when you have the normal can of paint you see on the shelf and it comes in a little activator or a hardener and you pour mm -hmm. it in and you stir it up and what happens is instead of your paint drying by aeration by the solvents leaving on the floor it dries mm -hmm. by a chemical reaction so the a and the part a and b are fusing together and it becomes something totally different than what a and b were originally because mm -hmm. all of your normal single pack paints they're reversible so if you put down a normal white spirit based paint if you ever spill white spirits on it and leave it ponding, you could get a brush and work it back up to what it was originally. It hasn't changed in terms of its yeah. structure. All yeah. it's done is dried by evaporation. It's the very same paint. So that's where you get those issues with like, you know, spillages and where you can wipe away the paint or if you spill fuel or oil in your garage. But two packs are, are, are much more high tech. And like if you go to a Tesco distribution center or Aldi, they'll all be done with two pack paints. Okay. Your people that are using this one can floor paint are just usually your homeowners. Once you go commercial at all. So not to make it too long winded, but once you add in that additive, like my God, like the, the level of hard wearing and chemical resistance, washability and resistance to water ponding on it in the longer term. So yeah, I think if you've had issues before, you need to jump up a level then and, and get a different, again, go to, like even in Dublin again, Stalorg and Pat McDonald's Fuller, they'll all have more techie paint than you'll see in your average, um, big, um, hardware store so go sure. into those and ask them they'll have those two pack paints and again some mm -hmm. of them come in little small three liters in all the rowels it's like I did my garage Amazing. floor pink Fabulous. yeah you can pick any yeah. color and, it's, and yeah. again get a contractor if you're nervous but the margin for error then is just get the A and the B and you mechanically stir them so your drill and those paint paddles you get in the hardware store or the paint mm -hmm. shop for you know, in your lot Brilliant. Okay, great. And then we got a lovely question just as we started. So I'm going to paraphrase because I didn't get a chance to write it down. But basically, the lady is saying that she hasn't painted her house for a long time, uh, many, many years. And she said, that basically, the magnolia paint is practically holding up the house. So she's wondering, does she need to prime her walls before she starts painting? No, I wouldn't bother. Like, cause like, paint sticks to paint, no problem. Like, you're only looking right. for a primer yeah. for two reasons. One, if it's a porous substrate and you want your sealer to go in and grip onto it, it's mm -hmm. not going to soak in your paint. And number two would be if it's a difficult surface to stick to. So tiles, windows, laminate, composite doors. But when something's already painted, paint sticks to paint very effectively. What I would do is give them a really good wash and a light sanding and then straight on with your paint. I wouldn't waste your time with a primer in that situation. Yeah. And like Magnolia is a fairly light color anyway. So it's not like it's going to, to show through unless. And, and Kate, what if, it, what if the walls, God forbid, were painted in a high gloss or something like that? Like, and then you want to put a matte paint on top. Is just sanding it down that's sufficient to... Yeah, I, I'd yeah. go with a light sanding, yeah, because you'll save yeah. on buying another product. And what you'll gain is when you're sanding anyway, you're mechanically agitating any dirt or anything on there. So we want them to sand it anyway. So if you were buying an adhesion primer, which there is, and you put it on, it, that's a compromise on sanding. So I, re, I would just get really hot water, scrub it back, and then get a, a light sand everywhere. And it'd be fabulous. So if it's a gloss, you always have two options, sand or prime. People often mm -hmm. will go with the primer still, with sanding people hate the sanding but yeah a good sanding is there's nothing really beats it no no okay that's brilliant great brilliant Kate and then I might just touch on like uh, interestingly enough most of the questions are the same thing colors neutral colors for north facing dark dark sort of rooms so I know we touched on these before 
and I have the lovely yeah. cards here. But um, the one you did the last day, Denise. Jeez, we've been selling them since. Yes, was it sand? Well, yeah. Uh, so chai. I, I, I chai. Yeah, chai was beautiful. Um, what was the other one I was looking at here? So there's some gorgeous ones like this mulberry, which is this lovely Ooh, kind lovely. of. Yeah, really, really nice one, I think. And then, um, you know, something like Merino is really nice as well. They've just got a little bit of warmth in them, but they're still that very neutral. They're sort of a cooler um, version, especially, you know, if you, you have sort of a more traditional scheme rather than going for the creams and the yellows and things like that. They're, they're a more contemporary look, I suppose. Um, and then there's some gorgeous ones as well, like people asking about what, what whites to use for the woodwork. So I think we talked about it before, the Ticarella White, which is this one here, which is yeah. such a gorgeous yeah. colour. Yeah, really, really it's nice. Lovely, yeah. Um, it's nearly what I might... Sorry, Kate. Sorry, Denise, I was just saying that Ticarella White, nearly every scheme would be our top seller because it's so neutral. It's not yeah. very affected by other colours, so it can kind of go at every scheme. No, it's fantastic. And then we had a lady asking about, she's painted her kitchen a grey-green and wants to paint her tiles. So she was asking, like, what colour to paint? And I would be keeping it really neutral. Something like the Ticarella White would be gorgeous because yeah. Yeah. You, you don't want to sort of uh, make another feature like that grey green kitchen. Yeah. That's your statement. So keep yeah, everything else really, really neutral and fresh. So that, that would be gorgeous. But what I might do, like yeah. I did the last time, I might just put these up in stories and actually answer all the colour questions directly. And then I can Brilliant. recommend so, so people can, <laughs> can see because it's hard to remember all the names. So I might just do that. So listen, That'd be brilliant. Want... We need those the last time. Sorry. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. We have the story to... still saved. <laughs> well, I'll share them as many as I can. But listen, thank you Happy so much. Time. I'm sure you're extremely busy today, this Saturday before Christmas. Um, if like myself. I've been getting the mascara. Sorry. Oh, you be getting mascara. <laughs> <laughs> there's a bit of a delay here uh, I think I'm a little bit behind you but yeah I'll be busy reapplying the mascara I don't know what happened to my eye before I came on but my god you're burning the socket off me while I'm talking to you but. oh you poor thing well listen thank you so much happy Christmas um, no doubt we'll be seeing lots of you in the new year um, and are you guys are you open over the holidays are you closing up or no yeah we're closed up and, and we're delivery we're, we're online only so we're probably we wouldn't be advising if someone was stuck for something we wouldn't probably be advising to order now now we'll be sending okay. out orders on Monday but just in case so when they're gone out Monday you should have them the Tuesday Wednesday but just in case I'd say pop to your local independent and no so we're closed up which is great it's lovely to be in an industry that you have the luxury of closing so we don't open till the 4th and uh loads of testing then in January because the market is somewhat quiet in January people aren't aren't too keen on painting and the weather and that so February then it'll be all, all systems go brilliant okay well listen have an amazing Christmas a very well deserved break um and everybody tuning in thanks so much for all your support all your following all your lovely comments happy Christmas everybody and we'll see you in the new year thanks Kate Denise have a good one thank you Denise talk you to you shortly too. take care bye-bye bye-bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye.